What's going on, everybody? On today's mailbag show, we break things down like what's David Johnson's value? Where he should he end up? Kenyon Drake's value if he actually replaces him. Carry on Johnson's value after he tweeted incorrect things about cereal. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. Oh, oh, oh. well... I'm your host yet again, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by the current reigning heavyweight champion of my best friendship. Thank you. Jason Moore. When you can eat like I can eat, I am the heavyweight champion of your friendship. And eat we did. We had a lot of beans. We had a lot of rice. And then I was like... We had a lot of food. It was very nice. It's like, you know what I should... (laughs) Oh, yeah. we went to a full poem. Then I said, hey, you know what, beans and rice, I should have a cheese enchilada as well. Mm. I ordered... I won't, I'm not going to poop for three days. Responsibly, I got the small cheese crisp. You were very responsible. I mean, well... But they brought me the large! <laughs> bank error in your favor. Yes. <laughs> There's nothing better in the world than when you go to a restaurant and you order healthy... Yeah. They're like, I'll get the salad. They're like, sir, yes. I'm sorry. We're out yes. of it. There's a lettuce shortage because of E. coli. Yeah, romaine. We, we can't do it. Yeah, all right. I'll take the Big Mac. <laughs> you did this. That's on you. These calories don't count. That's right. That's right. Because it's on you. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. It is a mailbag special. I like that my, my healthy choice was the small cheese I- crisp. <laughs> Can you take a tortilla, cover it in cheese, a lot of butter, some I salt? Let it go. <laughs> I like dipping it in sour cream. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to the show. On today's show, we're going to talk about, of course, our current reigning fantasy Valentine. Because, you know. Tomorrow. T- tomorrow. I hope that everyone is prepared. I hope you have a nice evening plan for your significant other. If you are those, so like maybe you don't have a significant other. Mm-hmm. I hope you have a pizza movie night planned. By yourself. By, oh, just get the biggest pizza. Play those video games. Get some ice cream in honor of Andy. Let me ask you this. Can I cancel my plans with my significant other mm. and then just have my own pizza night with video games? That, sound, so, that so, sounds way better. So basically you're saying, can I cancel my marriage? Sorry, wife. <laughs> can I cancel my marriage? <laughs> So I can watch. I think you can do that, and you'll end up watching movies and eating ice cream and playing video games. <laughs> For a long, long time. But instead, Mike, I, I would keep those plants because we're going to see Nate Bargatze. Oh, that's a, that's a secret. That's oh. I haven't even told him Shh. yet. Don't, oh, tell, anybody, don't tell my wife. If you want to follow the show, if you want to watch the show, go to YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. If you want to follow along on the socials, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. Jason is also on Instagram. Oh. Working on that post at Jason FFL. How is that going? Jay? So my post is going live any day now. I have any. I I can't. I've been waiting for this literally for months. But here's the here's the thing, Mike. And you don't even know this. It's going live in a couple days. Hold on. It's done, like I'm not even joking. Breaking news. That's right. That's right. I'm I'm I've got a post ready to go. Everyone go follow at Jason FFL on Instagram, but make sure you follow me as well at FF Hitman. I got to keep my numbers up. I got to keep in front of Jason. Mm-hmm. And Andy is at Andy Holloway. Our Twitters are the same as well. TheFantasyFootballers.com. That's the website. You can listen to the show everywhere podcasts are available. If you'd like to listen ad free, that's available on Stitcher Premium. Jason, do you have your Fantasy Valentine prepared to talk about? to gush about, to publicly announce your admiration for. Yeah, I think I do. I think I do. So, this Valentine's Day, I'm reaching out to someone who is, you know, is usually associated with Halloween. 
It's a little scary. No, we've, we've abandoned that. We've well, officially abandoned that. Scary Terry is what some people call him. Terry McLaurin, I want you to be my Valentine this year because I believe in you. I believe in your talent, and I also believe you have some problems. Like when I reach out and I'm looking at who do I want, sometimes I want a little baggage. Sometimes I want some some issues. Sometimes you want some violins to come in at the right time. Right, and so your quarterback is going to keep hey. your it's going to keep your price down. Hey. It's going to make sure I can get you where I want you in the draft. <laughs> and so I believe that it yeah. is worth the gamble. Okay. When you've got a guy who has that much talent and he showed it in his rookie year, his speed, his route running, his hands, and he, you know, he was great with Case Keenum, and then he had a problem, which was Haskins came in and was terrible. But towards right. the end of the year, Haskins started actually showing that maybe like there was there were some signs of life. You know, with Josh yes, Rosen, true. You never ever saw signs of life. Never right. saw like that game that's like You've given me hope. You never got a photograph of him with today's paper. There exactly. was no proof of life. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I think that he is not going to be some overdrafted hype man because of Dwayne Haskins, but I'm going to take the gamble because if, if Haskins takes that leap forward, then the payoff will be there right. with Scary Terry. Terry or Mc we've abandoned that. The F1. F1, the McLorian, Terry McLovin. He's got a lot to choose from. We're going to need – Terry to sit down and let us know what he's going to go with. Terry, you have an open invitation to come on the oh, show. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure he listens to this podcast. It's one of the many, many of our NFL players listen to this show. Shout I, out. What's up, Kyle Usechek? What's Check? up, Usechek? I know you're listening. You've also got the invite. Tell us your Super Bowl experience. Come on the show. Andy's not here. He gave us his Valentine. If you haven't been listening to the show for the last couple of months, then you wouldn't know. If you have, then you know, of course, his his Valentine's Joe Mixon. Yes. The the man is I think borderline too, obsessed. I was gonna say I think he's too in love with Joe Mixon. But Actually, he is in love. While he was gone, he doesn't even know this yet. The uh the subpoena came, the 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 uh restraining order. The restraining order. Yeah. It showed up while he was gone. I accepted it on his behalf. It's five hundred miles. Yeah. Usually it's like done in yards. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I, we're spoiler. I don't have any. I don't have I think, any restraining order. Feet? I don't know. What you apparently you have a restraining order, Mike. I just have seen very many movies where they hand them out, and they hand them out willy nilly, and they also have to deliver them to you in person, so you can just hide in your bathroom. Apparently, when they knock on your door, so they oh, have they have to get you like punked. So they that's jump out in the bushes. That's when they come with the gotcha. No, you Restrained. come with the big check and the balloons and the camera crew. <laughs> And you come and ring that doorbell, and you're like, Ed McMahon shows up. Yeah. Hey, oh, you've, you've been, been restrained. <laughs> All right. My Valentine for 2020. I'm going with a second year player like Jason, where, and, and honestly, I mean, I was, I was, uh, you know, sort of into this guy. I, I like the draft capital, third round pick. I like that he landed with a team that historically has been known, at least of, as of recent, that. They just hit on wide receivers. They have some misses, but they hit a lot on these guys. Deontay Johnson, I like him. Pittsburgh Steelers, he led the Steelers in targets and receiving yards as a rookie. He had the third most receptions of the rooks. And he was playing with Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges. What he was dealing with was a full Shakespearean tragedy. What he had to encounter as a rookie. Yeah, Duck Hodges, metaphorically speaking, came in and, you know, he killed Mason Rudolph. <laughs> and then Mason Rudolph came back and then Mason Rudolph killed himself. Yes. It was a, it was a true Romeo and Juliet situation, metaphorically speaking. Like, that's how the season played out. And, and I'm interested. I mean, yes, Juju's there. But look, Big Ben is going to be back. De Deontay Johnson is just – he's so fascinating – that he was able to do what he did with with the quarterback play around him. And, yeah. and I know that I, like James Washington is interesting as well. But I don't know. I just, no, Deontay Johnson Deontay is Johnson, definitely yeah. the one that you want to focus on there. Younger, uh, I think, has, has shown more. In, both of them have a short career. 
has shown more. Deontay Johnson looks to be, you know, he passes the eye test. He didn't have the team that could support him. Hopefully next year. I think it's easy pickings to say the Steelers are one of the biggest improvements on offense because whenever you go from no quarterback to a quarterback, it's going to help. And if I said receiving yards, I just meant targets and receptions. He also – Because Washington had more yards than he did. So I'm not sure – about team wide, maybe one of the quarterbacks had him beat, but I'm very confident in uh, positional players that he led in fumbles as well. <laughs> he had a bit of a fumbling problem as a wide receiver, but I think he can get that taken care of. Reminder ultimatedraftkit.com. It is available for pre order. This is the lowest possible price. You can get a smoking price if you get the combo. If you're yes. looking for the, the, you know, the best UDK you can grab. Grab it now before March first because it's and if if you if you buy if you pre order I should say before March first you get a five dollar gift card to Shop Ballers ten dollars to Fantasy Champs you get entered into the raffle into the drawing for the first official twenty twenty spot of the Fantasy Footballers Listener League Jason mm. I'm in it. I, I know you're going to be there I'm a two time champion of that league I am now a silver medalist I'm proud of you. I'm just man. I'm crushing the silver medals these days. You you know the I last really few years to come through with a gold. You have been in a lot of championships <sighs> that you have lost. I am snake bit right now. I mean, I feel I don't want to. I don't want to say Brian Ketron, but I think I just did. I'm gonna need you to take that back. <laughs> we'll see by the end of the episode. I, you have said a lot of things to me. A lot of mean things to me. Never none, said. none meaner than what just occurred. Calling someone a straight loser is very rude, and so I do apologize. Thank you. News and notes from around the league. The Chargers officially announced that Phillip Rivers will enter free agency. Jay Glazer they will came, be moving on. Yeah, Jay Glazer came out, uh, I feel like a month ago, said yeah. that. We, and we presented that, and I don't know that we ever – officially talked about the fact that he was he wasn't presenting that as a fact but that's his strong belief he's usually right so we didn't really bring it up turns out he was right this one is official now philip rivers uh going on elsewhere and it looks like negotiations with the tampa bay buccaneers are at least real there right. is interest there um i know the vegas odds right now you can bet on things like this uh, of course you can. The best Why not? odds, or you could say the worst odds, as far as uh, you know, money for your dollar, would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's where they have him going number one, number two to the Colts. The third place bet is actually to retire. So they think it's more okay. likely that he goes to the Buccaneers or the Colts than he retires. It's just bananas to me that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be wanting to get Phillip Rivers. Like, the, I the, completely agree with you. The Bucks were seven, and, and look, I Philip Rivers is great. We've talked about on this show had debates of with Philip Rivers the numbers that he has put up over his entire career. Does he actually have a shot to make it into the Hall of Fame? Because he is he is a production monster. He never won a Super Bowl, but production monster. The Bucks were seven and nine last year. They are pick fourteen, so they are nowhere near the top of being able to get one of those. More likely franchise quarterbacks, unless they get trade a up. Justin Herbert, maybe. There's no way, not at 14. I just, I think I have that, I have that marked down as a zero percent possibility. Okay, but why? I mean, I guess seven or nine is close-ish. But you really think that going from 30 for 30, Jameis Winston, to 20 for 20, Philip Rivers is going to take your team to the next level? Nope. I mean, you got to have the future. I get a lot of uh, tweets whenever Philip Rivers does something yeah, because he's true. Because I've had such a because he murdered your soul. Yes, he murdered my soul this year, and he's off my Christmas card list forever. But I do think Philip Rivers has been a phenomenal quarterback in his career. Yes, and this is not the Philip Rivers you want anymore. He's he's done. He's better than a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Correct. Like that. Make no mistake Correct. about that. But he's done as far as being a team that can lead someone to a Super Bowl, I believe. And the Chargers did uh, follow up. The Chargers GM said they like their internal options to replace Phillip Rivers. Which is Tyrod Taylor. That would be Tyrod Taylor, who becomes immediately fantasy viable if something if Tyrod actually gets that job. 
He'll be interesting. Yeah. He'll be interesting. They'll to- draft someone as well. Yeah, they'll, I mean, they'll have to. Speaking on Tuesday, the Panthers owner, when he was responding to a question about Cam Newton returning to the team, he said, well, is he healthy? It wasn't, we're, we've, got, we've got plans for Cam. We really hope that he's back with the team. No, it was, no, it's, was he healthy? It was it was a really derogatory way that he said it to. I believe the Panthers have a plan and have been forced into that plan by the exit of Greg Olson and Luke Keekley. They don't have a lot of talent. They have a ton of holes to fill, and I think they're going to be drafting extremely high in the twenty twenty one draft pick, and that Cam Newton will not be the quarterback. Poor Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I mean. I think Christian McCaffrey. I'm talking career wise. Like the dude's gonna be great again for fantasy. He's gonna have put up monster numbers, but career wise, yeah, it stinks. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Speaking of running backs, the NFL Network's Ian Rappaport is reporting the Falcons are weighing their options of moving on from Devontae Freeman. It would clear some cap space. Still have a decent chunk of dead cap. The the issue there for me in them cutting him, it makes sense because the Falcons are one of the most cash-strapped teams, so they might need to make this move. The problem is if they make this move, then they have to find a replacement. And and granted, They have to draft one. Yeah, they, then they could draft a very good running back in the draft. That you know That's the way that I would rather approach this if I was a GM, but they don't have anybody waiting in the wings. Brian Hill. Wait, and, what about Edo Smith? Edo Smith, get out of my life. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Uh, what what about Olison? Rather have Philip Rivers playing running back. Oh goodness! So if they cut him, it will be a six million dollar dead cap. Yeah. Although he, if they keep him, he'll be nine and a half against the cap. So they will save a little bit of money. Well, Jason, are you ready for the mailbag? I am made for this. <laughs> You're made for the mailbag. I'm made for only the mailbag. Is that like? The, you you were made to be a, a postal worker? No, no, no. Like to receive packages. I love oh. receiving gifts. Jay Grids, are you prepared? <laughs> Great. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> Let's throw it in there at the end. All right. This one's from Twitter from Duncan Anglin. If the Cardinals were to let go of David Johnson, where would you like to see him land? There, I mean, there's only one place out there that I think if he lands, you can have optimism. Is it the obvious one? It is the obvious one. It's right. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, you, It's very difficult for a running back who looked bad in the running game. His, his receiving work is still outstanding. Right. But in the running game, he looked bad. For him to change teams... And let's say, based on this question, he was cut. Not Someone's not taking on that contract. They're, he's probably signing a cheaper contract to go to another team. I'm not going to have optimism that all of a sudden he's going to resurge into his career. But if he were to go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and go right back in the system with the same coach that he succeeded in while he's you know he's 28, he's not 32. He, he's definitely over the prime running back years. But he's not at the point where you go, he's hit that wall of carries, that wall of age. Well, he has, yeah, he hasn't hit it from either an actual uh, volume of carries, but his body looks like he may have hit I it. Mean, look, he Are looks, you going to be let, – let's say they end up with some kind of a rookie quarterback. Because I mean, if they don't re-sign Jameis and, let, and let's just okay, – let's go through the scenario. If Phillip Rivers is there – and David Johnson's there. This is a lot of hypotheticals, but it's the off season. This is the game we want to play. If Rivers is the QB, DJ is there, and he's the starter. You're interested. I'm interested as uh, a Lev Bell type of running back, a guy Marcus, that I think is going to have the volume, not be very efficient. Marcus Mariota is the quarterback. <laughs> uh, I would be much less interested. Teddy Bridgewater is the quarterback. In between, interested. <laughs> All right, one. Uh, Tom Brady's the quarterback. How about Jameis Winston? Well, but yeah, that's why I was because then I'm the, the most of, interested. Yeah, I, if Jameis is there and DJ is there, then yes, I'm very interested. Follow up question. This one's from Paul, also known as at the Big Gaston. Oh, no one fights like Gaston. No, no one I, bites like Gaston. 
<laughs> I don't remember the song. Where do you value Kenyon Drake if he stays with the Cardinals and they give David Johnson the boot? Oh, what a hypothetical world we are living in right now. What tier slash draft capital would you attribute if it's just Drake and Edmonds? Look, I, I know me. I know me for better and I know me for worse. I know myself and I know you, Jason. And if Drake is back... David Johnson. So David Johnson's gone, and they decide we're going to give money to Kenyon Drake. Right. They don't have to. He's a free agent. My chips will go all into the table. Yours will. Fully into the table. Yeah, yes. my, my Everything will as well. I have I, left. I've been a lifelong, uh, long term believer of Kenyon Drake. If you've listened to this show, you know that I think he is as talented as any tier two running back in the league. He's not the elite of the elite, but he is that next tier. He's phenomenal. And if they gave him the role in this offense that produced. I mean, Chase Edmonds had a game. David Johnson had great fantasy games. Kenyon you know Drake who had, had good games? Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake, right off of the airplane. The, the game against San Francisco, he was stuck on the tarmac, and they had to police escort him in. And he like his first few plays, he was actually in street clothes. Right. I he don't know if you people remember this. I remember that. And then he'd go on the sideline. They're like, you should have the helmet yeah. first. And, then, <laughs> and then, then he got the pants on, then the pads. Yeah. He had just gotten there, Look, and he was great. In the games... I'll be all in. In the games that he played, and keep in mind, David Johnson was still there. He didn't get a ton of work. Chase Edmonds was there, obviously. He would have been on a 16-game pace of 1,286 yards, 16 touchdowns, j all of that just on the ground, uh, You know, another 56 receptions. I mean, he, he, that's the thing. He's a well-rounded... Uh, capable back to be a three-down guy, and um, I would be all in. And, I, and since we're living in, you know, dream hypothetical lands, I will remind you of the stat. If you take the numbers, the fantasy numbers from the Arizona starting running back every single game, yes, we were tricked who that starter was going to be multiple times. But, but if, just the value of the role. The value of that role the running back three on the season in a half-point PPR scoring format. That's why I would be all in. Yeah. And the improvement of that team, the improvement of Kyler Murray, yes, all in. All right, we have a voicemail question. Hey, guys, this is Caleb from North Phoenix. And you know in baseball how the, the batters have the walk-up music? I think it would be really cool in football is if we had touchdown music. So what song would you want to play if you scored a touchdown in the NFL? And do you think that's a good idea? See you. Number one, Jason, is this a good idea? Oh, this is a no. It's a great idea. This is a sensational idea. I don't know why we don't do this. Why do we not associate some awesome music with these players? Yeah, this I mean, like, imagine this. Oh, every time he gets in, he'd just be hopping around on that stick horse. <laughs> stick horse. You know, like when you got the little horsey on a pole. But where did he get the stick horse oh, from? It's, it's in the goalpost. That's a fifteen-yard penalty. Worth it. Yeah, uh, uh, to celebrate on a stick horse. So what? What would be? Uh, what would be your? Well, my song is easy because there is a song that has my name in it. Okay. N K O T B. New kids on the block for the un <laughs> for the uninitiated. I was, I was the right to... stuff. Oh 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 oh. oh, oh. Thank, yeah, you know oh, it. Oh 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 oh. oh, 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 oh. The, the right stuff. stuff. That's every fantastic. time I scored. And I would be doing the... It's got that, like, keyboard synth. It goes... Do, 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 the drums. And I would be doing the dance. Oh, it would be sensational. I had an older sister. I have an so, older yeah, sister. That's that's how I know. Luke. I had an older sister as well. There were... there were She new, had the cassette tape. I mean, look. If you think my house did not have New Kids on the Block posters, <laughs> you're wrong. Um, they're just in the room next yes. door. So... And my, some in mine. It's <laughs> fine. Look. You can like NKOTP. It's fine. Uh, look. If I'm playing in the NFL, I'm a fullback. I'm Kyle Juszczyk. I'm just, okay. you know, I'm just trying to underrated, s smash people. Underrated. I would hear shockingly athletic. I would hear, oh, he's surprisingly <laughs> athletic, or he's got a lot, a lot of heart, boxy. a lot of heart, a lot, a lot of, of boxy. boxy. These are things that would be said to me. <laughs> so when I get in the end zone, I'm going with my girl Aretha. Aretha oh. is R E S P E C T and uh. me. You you know it. You give me that respect. <laughs> I'm gonna get every time. I'm gonna make get the crowd into it. Oh, that's a good. I'm gonna call. be. I'm gonna be doing the air punches on the soccer to me. Oh, soccer wait. To me, soccer to me. So you think they're gonna play the entire song? Oh yeah, I want a 55 yard penalty. 
Wait, a uh, what? Yeah. 55! Oh! And they'll never let me score again. This one's off of IG from Zach Blanchard. Or Blanchard. I don't know. What round would you draft Le'Veon Bell in? Yeah, I've I've looked at this. Le'Veon Bell, as a reminder, was the uh, 17th running back in half-point scoring. You mean he finished at 17? He finished as okay. the running back 17 for the volume he got that is horrifically bad. That's sad. We had a shocking stat yes. on uh, Tuesday's sh shocking stats episode. Shocking. Stats show so shocking that the jelly in your eyeballs – Began to boil. That's right. Shot. <laughs> Stats so shocking. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Uh, that you no longer have hair to shave. Okay. This all has just been removed from the body. Um, Perfect. But that he had, uh, he was the 563rd out of 565 eligible players with that many carries as far as his yards per game. Right. He was atrocious. He still got Adam Gaze. I don't believe in him. Now, he's not off my board because the volume matters. He mm -hmm. was consistently an okay running back. If he's your running back too, fine. So, to me, he is the back end of the third round. There's probably a dozen running backs and a dozen wide receivers and two tight ends that I would take ahead of him. So, you're talking in the, the late 20s. I agree. He, he, Let's see what the price is because it's – It'll be too high. I probably won't have them. It might be. It's just the the volume will be there. This next question from Facebook. Ben Flanagan has carry on Johnson. Mm. <laughs> it's carry on Johnson lost value after his cereal take. Oh. Oh, my goodness. So, do you remember – Don't you eat like that no more. <laughs> um, do you remember when I was a big proponent of Sammy Watkins? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I pushed the Sammy agenda. And then early before this the year, Sammy agenda. <laughs> before this past season, yeah. I reeled back on that significantly. And do you remember the reason why? I believe the reason why was because you came across a message he posted on Twitter inferring that he was – not a homo sapien. He was not a human being. He was, in fact, a lizard person. Yeah, and it was more than that. It was a string of a bunch of messages that said, oh, he's a crazy person. This is... Cold he's a cold-blooded, crazy person. This is someone that... He's I, a reptile. I see why he has struggled to pick up the NFL because he... Maybe he is... Maybe it is because he's a lizard. No, because if he had lizard hands... Have you ever seen a lizard climb a wall? Oh, they they're very sticky. They're lightning. They just they climb up any surface that they want. If yeah. he had lizard hands, he would catch everything thrown at him with just with an open palm. It is he wouldn't even have to close his hand. It would just stick. It is very difficult to catch a lizard. But um they got the tail, they can just shake it off whenever they need to. So for the uh, the unaware out there, Carrion Johnson tweeted out oh, back to Carrion. Back to Carrion. Uh he tweeted out a picture of a bowl of cereal with milk being added on top on the mm. left, and then a bowl of milk mm -mm. with cereal being added mm -mm. on the right, and he uh, mm -mm. declared that he is a true cereal person because he is. He on declared the, a. Tr he was the. He, he was, was the true cereal. He, said, he wasn't even posed as a question. No, this was all the true cereal people really understand that it's got to be the one on the right, which is the bowl of milk, and then you pour cereal in it, which is. So incorrect and stupid and wrong that I I will adjust my rankings. Wherever I finish with carry on, I'm going to move him one spot down. Yeah, one, at least. One. Well, I still love him a lot. I think he's a phenomenal player. Uh, and right. I hope that if he can turn his cereal ways around, maybe that will affect his uh, health. Maybe that's the health maybe, problem. Maybe he's eating too many Cocoa Puffs. Mm, maybe. Too many, what's your favorite cereal, Jay? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Although that's not even true. It's just what I say. <laughs> Because it is great. But Reese's Puffs. What? Why do you say it? Because it is the one-on-one. If we were doing a draft. So you're saying it's like the popular cereal. It's basically like saying my favorite player is Michael Jordan. Because, one, I liked him a lot. Okay. And he's also, you know, considered the best ever or whatever. So it's the combo. I love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Sure. And it's considered the best ever, so I'm in. But Reese's Puffs, 
if if those two boxes are right next to each other, you'll, and go, I had you'll go Reese's. I'll go Reese's. I will go Fruit Loops. Brooks, what's your favorite cereal? I'll probably go Cocoa Pebbles. Cocoa Pebbles. I like it, Brooks. Yeah, that's that's an original pick. Delish. Yeah. You don't hear that very much. I would no, because it becomes mush. And cinnamon. What does cinnamon toast crunch become? Well, it's at least it starts crunchy. It becomes mush the second the milk well, hits it. I bet if he ate his his cocoa pebbles the way that Carry On Johnson eats them, they would all be crispy. That's true. Maybe he's onto something. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this one is from Instagram from SB Roster twenty seven. Are you buying? Next year, Matt Ryan will be a top five quarterback because of him flipping from great to meh every other year. So the hard hitting mm. science based analysis of Matt Ryan's pattern of being terrible and then elite. He was not he, Where did he, he was finished this year, do you know? Uh not great, Bob. Yeah, it wasn't well, he missed a couple games. He started the year pretty strong, then he had uh, a lack of weapons. Looks like Matt Ryan finished at 11, so outside the top 10 this year. And to speak to what the uh, Instagrammer is referring to here, Matt Ryan in his career, so he finished 11 this year. The previous year, 2. The previous year, 15th. The previous year, 2. Then 19. Then he was top 7. Then 15. Then top 7. So you've got this back and forth. And no, in no way, shape, or form do any of us here believe that that means that a bounce back will be great. This is not, uh, and I know it's said tongue-in-cheek, this isn't prescriptive or predictive in what will come, but it is... It's fun. It, well, no, it's more than fun. It, there is actual value to this, and that's what I think I was trying to bring up when I was low on Matt Ryan coming into this season. It wasn't that I believe it was because he was going to have a uh, continue the ping-pong back and forth. It's because his range of outcomes has both. And so when I said he was outside the top 10 and got a bunch of grief for it, um, it, I used this not as well. He went back and forth, so he's going back. But that half of the years he finishes poorly, right? And half of the years he finishes great. Going into next year, I think there's a lot to be said with the weapons. Uh, Austin Hooper's a free agent. If he's not re-signed, and Devonta Freeman is cut, and they bring in a rookie, I'm not going to be high on Matt Ryan. I'm not going to say that just Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones are going to get it done. But you know, look, if Hooper is back and the rookie they replace Freeman with, or they have Freeman as a pass catching uh, specialist or a, a really high end uh, draft pick, then yeah, I'll be more in on Matt Ryan. I will be in on Matt Ryan. One, I think he's an excellent, excellent quarterback. I've talked about that a lot. But in his, like you said, in his range of outcomes is a high end quarterback. But since the year 2012, he has averaged over 4,600 yards. Like it's just the touchdowns. You know that the yards are safe with Matt Ryan. It's just will the touchdowns actually come where he was he had twenty six this year with a touchdown rate of four point two. The previous year, thirty five with a touchdown rate of five point eight. The year before that, twenty at touchdown rate of three point eight. I mean it's it's all over the place with Matt Ryan, so the touchdowns are just inconsistent, but great quarterback always gives you the yardage. I, will the touchdowns come through? I I just don't know. I will say this. Um, one of the things that is uh, a little bit more prescriptive in this weird ping pong of his career arc is that the first year of a new coordinator, and it makes sense, he has not usually been the best Matt Ryan. That's fair. And people were using the fact that this is the second go-round of Dirk Cutter as their offensive coordinator, that this wouldn't be like a first-year Matt from, Ryan. It's not the ground up. But in reality, this is a new system. Dirk Cutter's not just coming in and doing what he did five years ago. He, if he was there the last five years, it would be new this year anyways. And so um, coming into this next season, Dirk Cutter is in tow, and he's going into year two of the system. So if they get the weapons around him, I will be in on Matt Ryan. This one is from Shea Castle off of Twitter. How many leagues is too many leagues? Is it better to do a bunch of different formats, scoring, or does that only make it more confusing? Yeah, I mean, this is a question that is to each their own. I can say that there is certainly a too many leagues. 
you know, a lot of fantasy fanatics, and I am certainly a fantasy fanatic, would say there's no such thing as too many leagues. But I've I've played in so many leagues that I can't focus as much in the league or few right. leagues that I care about so much. So I have like a perfect example for this is as we started the podcast more opportunities came for leagues and it was I was so hungry to just be in more and more leagues cuz like but more is fun. One of my best friends, he's had a money league which I I always talk about my money league. I have performed very very poorly in that league for the past 2 years because I just don't, don't care, care about it. Yeah. I don't, it's not that I don't care about it. It's just I get it's, it's, I get waiver exhaustion. I get trade exhaustion. I mean, because to to really go through your league and and make a trade. I mean, you're looking at your team. You're going. You're analyzing every other team because you can't just pick out a player. I'm I'm gonna go get Aaron Jones, no matter what the cost. You're like, no, you got to go find someone who's compatible with you. Who's on the waivers? I mean, you have to do a lot of things. In a league, and I just I didn't have the mental focus for that league, so it was always like embarrassing. Of they it's, know they know what my occupation is, and they're like, "Why are you, we're kicking your butt?" And you're like, "Because I'm not. I I don't want to just say, well, I didn't try because I'm sort of trying. I'm just, but I'm not. I don't have the energy to put into that league that will make me great at it. Yeah, the and and that's you know as as we go through the year our show tries to focus on that. The holistic approach right. of fantasy football, not just not just the information because we have all the information in our minds when we go and play in these leagues, but then you have to apply that information to the context of the leagues, the situation. You know, you're you're making waiver claims. Well, what what waiver priority are you? Cuz that's going to change in this league or that league or what I take. How much fab do I have? How much fab does my uh, do yes. my opponents have? Uh, every what's, what's my schedule coming up in this? What's the schedule of of my number one opponent? If you have so many leagues where you're basically just saying these are the players I like, the prizes I like for them, and I'm just going to go shotgun that everywhere, you're not going to win those leagues outside of just dumb luck. You have to really have that context, dive deeper, um, and yeah, and so it's not that you don't care about that league, it's just you care about that league sixth most right. of your leagues. Yes, I care about the other leagues more. So it That's gets true. the least time and, and that. So yeah, play in a... I, I, like three, I can handle three leagues yes. pretty competently. Recently, I have been trimming the fat, so... Uh, my buddy's league just folded, so it. I will be in our league of record, our dynasty league, and our listener league. That's r currently what is scheduled for me. And a co-owner in our Dino Junior league. Mike. Sure, but I'm a co-owner, sure. so I don't feel the pressure of it. But I'm I, I'm ecstatic that I only have three leagues. So the true answer is, if it's still fun for you on a Tuesday night to go through every one of those leagues and make the proper waiver claims. That's the number. Yep. For us, it's about three. Yeah, three or four. And then we have a couple teams we we co-manage yeah, together. That's why I say that's what's scheduled for me. Things will probably pop up. Yeah. James in Kentucky, this one's from the website, says, I was wondering if you could give me some advice on podcast equipment. So this is not a football question. but oh, okay. It's fun. That's fun. Look, we're a podcast. Yeah. But advice on podcast equipment. <laughs> like, why, why did Mark Waltenberg just show up? <laughs> Hey, Talk it's okay. About. I don't know. Just say hi to your mother for me. Podcast equipment like microphones, recording devices that are of good value for a home studio setup. Well, James in Kentucky. You're talking to the perfect man. We have run the gamut. We have had cheap equipment. We now have, we're, we're for, we're, we are fortunate that we have higher end equipment now. But honestly, if you really want to start a podcast, you can do so on a pretty decent budget. Uh, there is a microphone that I recommend by a company. They're called Behringer. It's called a Behringer B1. It is a condenser microphone, which means that you will need an audio interface with phantom power for this microphone. If that, if anything I just said is confusing, that means you need to jump on YouTube and get some audio tutorials because that's the number one thing: is educate yourself about audio. And you'll be all right. And it's not hard. It's not no. like, oh, you're telling me I've got to become not, an it, audio expert. It's no. not rocket science. No, you just have to. You just have to figure out how to use your microphone and you know, and your audio input device, and that that's it. Those two things, and 
<clears throat> those are pretty cheap. I yeah. mean, they're they're not throwaway money. I think right. a Behringer B1, you like can find for bucks. about 100 bucks. Yeah. Uh, you can get a pretty cheap uh, audio interface. And, and then you will sound like a professional podcast yep. right off the bat. And, and there's free audio editing programs out there like Audacity. I mean, it's, and for an audio program, it's really just whatever you become comfortable using. They all basically do the same thing at this point. Yeah. They, you, they, I mean, if, if you're, you're on a Mac, GarageBand is built in. Yeah, that, that, that's a little tougher to use for podcasting. I will say that. But, I mean, like 15 years ago, the audio programs did different things. Now they all basically do the same thing. Hopefully that helps you. Instagram from A. Alex Anderson. Oh, A. Alexa Anderson. This one's for you, Jason. Yeah, because I don't know how to live without Alexa, and I mean that genuinely. No, in Dynasty. My life, I don't. I couldn't even t- turn my lights on anymore. Dynasty question: What do you do with Damian Harris? Mm. Damian uh, Harris truther. There's probably people <laughs> listening to this podcast right now who, who? Going, going who? So. I was just typing in Patriots running back. <laughs> uh, yeah, to bring that up. So yes, Damian Harris was a uh, draft pick last year by third the round. Is Patriots. that right? Sounds right. They, he wasn't. He was uh, third round pick. Yeah, third round pick running back Damian Harris, and he was unfortunately not used at all. Um, they had their. They, I mean, they had a bunch of running backs already ahead of them. Obviously, they have James White. Uh, Rex Burke Sexy Rexy is still was there. there, and of course Sony Michelle, the first rounder. Um, but I still think one hundred percent you hold on to him. I, uh, you know, you might be in some position where your roster is just loaded, and you've got a ton of, uh, you know, a ton of draft picks, and you've got to make roster cuts where Damian Harris um, is in consideration. But for me, I'm holding. Because we've seen Patriots players and, and running backs take a while to get used to the system, not be used their rookie year. And then uh, look at James White, right? Sure. I mean, James White, here's uh, his rookie year. He had nine carries and five targets. Now, look, and that seems terrible, but I believe that's four more carries than Damian Harris received. It wasn't nine more carries than Damian Harris received. So <laughs> – <laughs> my 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 point is we've seen this team y- use time to get someone ready and then and when they're ready they come in. I do think Damian Harris is a talented enough running back to succeed if given the opportunity. He has not received the opportunity, but one injury to Sony Michelle's degenerative knee uh that is a season ender and Damian Harris will maybe Rex Burkhead's still there. No, right, I, right now. yes, but then Someone will take the Rex Burkhead role. Would you rather have Damien Harris or Chase Edmonds right now in Dynasty? Chase Edmonds. Would you rather have Damien Harris or Latavius Murray? Uh, Latavius Murray. There's more assurity that I'm going to get points this year. Chase Edmonds or roll the dice on Justin Jackson from the Chargers having a bigger role this year. So if I had to make the decision right now, I think the path for Justin Jackson is – clearer assuming they don't resign Melvin Gordon obviously if if they were to go ahead and resign Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler and that that core is the same then I would rather keep Damian Harris and move on from Justin Jackson from the website Zach in New Orleans says when should Joe Burrow be drafted in a dynasty startup it's a tough question but so I I took a look at Dynasty League Football, our friends over there, they run some mock drafts and get ADP. So I'm going to ask you some questions, Jason. Sight unseen, Joe Burrow as a rookie quarterback, would you rather have him, mm-hmm. who is presumably playing for the Bengals? Yeah, I think that's safe to say. Would you rather have Joe Burrow or Daniel Jones? That's a great question, and I would rather have... Joe Burrow. Wow. It's okay. close. It's definitely close. Well, but I think that the um, – Well, for context, Daniel Jones, DLF has him as the 11th quarterback off the board right now. Wow. Okay. That's surprising So maybe me. Daniel Jones, you don't believe in that value. All right, yeah. let me go down here a little bit further. Would you rather have Joe Burrow or Jared Goff? Oh, that's great. I, I would I would rather have Jared Goff. But that, but that doesn't really help on this question because this is – in the context well, of a rookie-only draft. No, he, it's a startup. 
Oh, there's a startup. Yeah, the draft. question was in a startup dynasty startup draft. Where is it going to go? That's oh. why I'm I'm trying to find those are great your actual value of these guys. I would rather have a known commodity than okay, a hopeful commodity. Okay, Jared Goff. Okay, and let's... I I do penalize Joe Burrow, and and I you know I I apologize to the fans out there, but I penalize him for the Bengals organization. I think that the Bengals mm. organization is a poorly run top down organization, and that is going to hurt players that go there. I mean. Uh, how did Carson Palmer's career arc as a Bengal go? It, it you know there were there were major problems there, and um, I, I don't think it's you know to the level of the Browns you know as far as dysfunction, but that hurts his ability to be a locked and loaded prospect that can't miss. So it sounds like you're going to be if you want Joe Burrow. You should be looking at him uh, right around, starting around like pick 130 or so. He will probably go earlier because in dynasty startups, people go a little bit crazy. With young quarterbacks. For a young potential of what Joe Burrow could be. Because what they think is, if he's really good, I'll have, I have him, him forever. I have got him for 15 yeah. years. But the thing is, is you know, uh, four or five years ago, in the draft, four or five years ago in a dynasty startup draft, Drew Brees you could get at the end of the draft because yes. he's an old man and he's, what do you get, another year? And then five years later, you've been using Drew Brees forever and you're fine. So, yeah, look at some of the aged quarterbacks. That's why I say Jared Goff is great. I mean, yeah. and he's actually kind of If you're in a one-quarterback dynasty league, the position is still devalued. You're not going to be able to stream off of the waiver wire but you're gonna have you can still save and draft like three quarterbacks later in your draft, and then just use them as your platoon. Off of Instagram, Nicholas Boa, when did Jason last shave, and is he trying to take Mike's bearded crown? Mm. Now well, it appears that you have trimmed recently. I have this week because you were. I was getting a little. You were rough. a bushman. Yeah, I. So what I kind of do is nothing. <laughs> uh, that's kind of my uh, avenue. That's your approach. That's my approach. I All try right. to. I try to not do anything with it, and then eventually I go and I get a haircut. Ah, okay. And, uh, and, and uh, Alicia or Kevin, depending on who I go to, right? Um, they they they, they do the the head and they do the, the face. little trimmy trim on the beard, and then from that point, what I do is nothing until I'll see you at the next I'll haircut. See you at the next haircut. It's not. Uh, this is not my recommended approach. It is si simply my approach. So d do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. All right. Off of Twitter, we've seen this question before, but people want to know from at Big Toe P, Big Toe P, or Big Toe, but it looks like Big. No, I much prefer Big, big Toe P. Big Toe P. Keep <laughs> keep trade cut pancakes. Waffles, French toast. Oh, that one's easy. I'm keeping French toast. Me too. Trading those waffles and cutting them cakes. Between pancakes and waffles, I honestly don't know what has more trade value. I feel like pancakes are devalued because everybody always has these. It's a throw in. Limit. Would you like a side of pan? Please. Please take a side of pancakes. Yeah. We'll give you an unlimited side of pancakes. I'd like the omelet. If just... Take the pancakes. I'd like an omelet, please. Would you like... Okay, that comes with either pancakes or toast. That It's it's, right. it's synonymous... With toast. With to It's tradable. That's the value of a pancake. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. So that's why I'm trading waffles here. All right, and then we have... Uh, apparently, people were very interested in asking questions for <gasps> the cardboard bear extraordinaire, oh. Jay Grizz, who you can follow on Twitter. Brooks, what's his handle? It's J, J Grizz FFL. And it's one Z. One Z. Yep. All right. Yeah. Go give him a follow. Excellent follow on Twitter. All right. Wrap it around here for J Grizz. General being a bear question. What tastes better fresh out of a stream? Salmon or trout? That's a great question. <gasps> oh, I would have thought it was the other one. From Mike. My question is keep trade cut. Yogi, Winnie, and Baloo. <gasps> Interesting. I I am really shocked to hear you say that. And then off of Twitter from Brian Hughes, is there a Mrs. J. Grizz? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Someone's out there looking, huh, Jay? <laughs> oh, hey, this is a family show. 
Okay, Jay? Inappropriate! We might need to edit that. Thank you for <laughs> sticking with us for today's mailbag show. I hope you had as much fun as we did. Reminder, check out our friends at Pristine Auction, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. When you sign up, use the registration code BALLERS. You're going to get $10 credit for your first purchase. You can get all kinds of signed memorabilia like a signed Packers photo of Devontae. Oh, we have a Devontae Adams double header. Yeah. Double header. You want that football cleat signed? I actually would. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. 80 bucks. But you want the signed 11 by 14 Devontae. That's like a centerpiece in your cool game room. 55! Oh! 55 bucks. That's what I went for yesterday. So check it out. Pristine auction. Completely free to make an account. Make sure you use the promo code BALLERS to get that $10 for free added to your account. Footland, make sure you check out ultimatedraftkit.com and stay with us all off season long. 10 things to remember is coming up next week. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.